Hey everyone, it's me, John Lorden. Welcome to another episode of Brain Scratch. And I just have to be upfront with you guys, even before we start today's topic. Sometimes researching these episodes, um, there's a pleasure that I get out of it because in reading through multiple sources, you are able to kind of get this track of what you feel like is good information or is solid, or you, you at least have aspects of the story that are supported by multiple sources and or sometimes physical evidence that helps, helps support what those sources are saying. However, when I do a different type of Brain Scratch episode, you guys know occasionally I will go into extraterrestrials or paranormal events. Um, sometimes it gets a little bit frustrating because the information doesn't kind of coagulate is, is kind of the best way that I could say it. It just doesn't gel together. You get so many people sell, telling so many different stories and extremely little physical evidence to look at to say, well, this person is more correct than that person. This person has better experience than that person. This case is right up that alley. Um, this is probably one of the toughest to research that I've done to date because quite honestly, even as I sit here and turn on the camera in front of all of you, I don't know the story. <laughs> I, I, and I'm gonna share with you guys the information I do have, but the core thread of this story has just been so mangled and it's all over the place. Now, admittedly, this is an older story. Today we are looking into the case of Val Valiant Thor. And this is a story that takes place in the 1950s. There was a book written by it. There's been a couple of people that have spoken about this person, Valiant Thor. Um, I guess the best way to do it is just to jump into it. So let's start from the beginning. Valiant Thor is apparently an alien from Venus, a Venusian, I believe it is claimed, that came here to Earth on his ship, the Victor One. Now, first of all, before we even continue from there, I just have to say this guy's name is Valiant Thor. He's riding around in a ship called the Victor One. I mean, does it strike anyone else that this sounds like it could be a plot for a radio show in the 1940s or maybe one of those early sci-fi shows in the 1950s? Um, I don't know. It just it really hits me very odd, just even from the outset of looking into this. But I promise you guys, I went in with an open mind um, and tried to find as much info as I could. So let's take a look at one of the first real problems that this story has. Here is a picture of Valiant Thor on the right here. This is supposedly um, his brother named Don. And this is Jill. And they also came on the Victor One with Valiant Thor. Thor to the Earth. And as a matter of fact, there is another person that was supposedly with them um, that also came along for this ride. But if we look at this picture here, I know that one's kind of small. Let me pull up a bigger one for you guys. Here we go. This picture is supposedly also Valiant Thor. And if we look at this guy, uh, it looks like he has either gray or possibly blonde hair. It's kind of hard to tell in a black and white photo. Very strong uh, jawline. This guy does not look the same to me as this other version of Valiant Thor. Um, this guy here. Not anywhere near the same. And according to different experts that you will look into, if, if you choose to look into this case, you will hear, yes, this is Valiant Thor. Yes, this is Valiant Thor. Here we can see there's several other pictures of this version of Valiant Thor. And quite honestly, I think I've only seen this one photo for this version of Valiant Thor. Now, what's interesting about this version of him is this person sitting uh, right kind of behind him. This is Oscar Schneider. And I actually have a little bit, here's a couple of pictures of Oscar Schneider. We know this is a real person. He is the father of the late Phil Schneider. Now, if you watched one of my earlier brain scratches on the mysteries of the Denver airport, um, there's some talk about Phil Schneider in that video. 
He is a person that claims to have had you know, top secret clearance, worked on deep underground military bases. He insisted that there was tunnels connecting all of the U.S. Uh, underground so that you could get literally from California to New York within a matter of an hour or something like that. Um, pretty controversial stuff, de definitely in the conspiracy theory type vein. But his father was definitely a serviceman, and that is indeed... Uh, his father that is sitting behind Valiant Thor, at least in this picture. Now, this is part of where I think um, this story kind of became broken. The true, the person that I consider the true expert of this Val, Valiant Thor, I don't even know what to call it, uh, except uh, story, is an author named Dr. Frank Stranges. And the name of the book is Stranger at the Pentagon first published in 1967, and that is essentially the story of Valiant Thor. Let's jump down so you can get a bit more insight into what that story entails. Uh, on March 16th, 1957, in Alexandria, Virginia, Val, he goes by Val, Val's ship, the Victor One, landed and he and his crew of three, Jill, Don, and Tanya, were greeted by two police officers. And after some quick thought transference, had them call their superior officer, who called the Pentagon, and a meeting was arranged with Neil H. McElroy, the Secretary of Defense. Once McElroy confirmed the veracity of Val's claims, he was ushered through an underground tunnel to the White House where he met with President Dwight D. Eisenhower and Vice President Richard Nixon. Now what did he meet with them about? Well, according to Dr. Stranges, he had brought plans to help solve pretty much all the major problems of Earth. Um, apparently, Venus was worried that we were going to kill ourselves with our nuclear technology. Uh, he also brought plans that would end poverty and hunger and would even allow us to live forever, apparently. Um, at least, now that's Dr. Frank Stranges' version. Uh, also, worth noting, the only physical change that Dr. Strange has talked about in terms of Val being an alien was he noticed when he shook his hand, yes, Dr. Strange's got to meet him eventually, we'll get to that, he noticed when he shook Val's hand that he didn't have any fingerprints, that it was just perfectly smooth uh, on, the, on the tips of his fingers. Outside of that, apparently Val did not have a belly button. Now, Dr. Strangis was also uh, a minister. Um, he did a lot of evangelical work. And I've watched a presentation that he gave. Uh, he has now passed away. He died, I think, in 2008, if I recall correctly. But he was basically hitting the UFO circuit, doing presentations about Val, about this whole story, um, about him meeting Val. Uh, I guess we can get into that here. So he met Val when he was doing one of these talks. Uh, about Val. He had a picture of him and he started, apparently out of his own uh, church, he started holding meetings about this traveler from Venus that came to Earth and was living at the Pentagon for three years. Uh, he was at one of those meetings, or a book signing if I recall correctly, where someone came up to him and said, do you want to meet this guy that you're talking about? and she worked at the Pentagon. Her, apparently her name was Nancy Warren. I tried to do some investigating to see if I could dig out that identity as being a real person as you know, if she was working at the Pentagon around that time. Of course, those records are very tough to get information that is now you know 50 years old. And even if it was modern, I don't know that it'd be all that easy to get information about employees working at the Pentagon unless they happen to have a LinkedIn profile or something like that. Uh, I couldn't find anything to say that Nancy Warren did exist at that time. But the story, as Dr. Strange gives it, is Nancy took him to the Pentagon slipped him through security with a, a bit that quite honestly sounds like it's something from a, a Three Stooges film or something like that. She told him as they would approach security that she, she had a jacket on and her badge was under her jacket and she would lift the edge of her jacket to show her badge and security would just wave her through. She told Dr. Stranges, just do everything that I do and you'll get right through. He did not have a security badge. He had no clearance to be there. Apparently, he walked right behind her, opened up his jacket like he had a badge there, closed it, and they just waved him through. 
a bit unbelievable? Yes. To me, yes. And it also points towards the types of stories that you hear from Dr. Strangest when he talks about this whole thing. You know, if something fantastic was happening to me that I thought people were going to have trouble in believing, I would be trying to remember and recite elements of that story that would help prove my case. You know, I remember exactly what uh, the person looked like that was sitting behind the desk. Here, here's a picture of them from another website. You can see, yes, they work at the Pentagon. I mean, I would do something to try to substantiate my story. Telling these kind of whimsical, so yeah, I slipped through the security at uh, the Pentagon. I just went like this. And not only did it work at one security checkpoint, there was two security checkpoints before he got in to meet with Val. And then there was two more on the way out and he insists that it worked every single time. He would just lift up his jacket, show them no badge of any kind and they would let him through. Really, really kind of tough to believe in. And if you do watch one of his whole presentations, I'm gonna have a bunch of links down below. Um, one of them is an entire presentation of his. You will see that, first of all, he's a very good speaker. You can tell that he did a lot of work within church in terms of his speaking style. As a matter of fact, during these kind of UFO conferences, he is even conducting prayers for the entire crowd. Uh, helping to promise them financial gains, some, some kind of odd things in terms of what they're praying for, but he is conducting full-on prayers. Um, his speaking style is, I almost felt in a weird like I was, in a weird way like I was watching someone that was starting stand-up comedy or something like that. He just he talks about things that are just completely unrelated to the fantastic parts of his story. And then when he does get to the fantastic parts of his story, they turn into these kind of whimsical, jokey type things. It's really, really tough to, to buy into. Um, so essentially he meets Val in this office. Val shakes his hand, already knows his name. That surprises him. And they develop this kind of friendship and he goes on to meet Val several more times. Um, Val takes him to his ship the Victor One, which when you look at this story logically, even the part that I read to you about the police uh, finding Val, you have a spaceship somewhere sitting in Virginia apparently. Uh, no one seems to notice that the spaceship is there. Yes, perhaps it had a cloaking device of some kind. Uh, according to what Dr. Strange has said, that ship at one point was in orbit around Earth at 100 miles and most recently, it apparently is sitting at Lake Mead uh, near Las Vegas, but you probably wouldn't be able to see it because it has a force field. Um, you wouldn't notice that there was any indentation where it was because it's on a bed of rocks. He said the only way that you might notice it is if you saw all the dead insects around the force field, but with the wind out there in, in point at Lake Mead, it would just blow those insects away. So you probably wouldn't even be able to verify it there. And Val lives until approximately the age of 490. So that is kind of Dr. Strangest's version of Val. You then have the Phil Schneider version, which is considerably different, not just that the pictures are different. Um, Phil Schneider goes into Val's physiology much more in depth. Apparently, uh, Val has an enlarged heart. He only has one lung. There is more brain capacity. His IQ is somewhere around what would be registered to us as about 1,200. Phil also does not describe how he really got any of this information, how he substantiated any of this information, but he does show that cool picture with his daddy sitting behind Val. And the biggest thing Phil says that Val has six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. Now, in Phil's version of the pictures, you can't really see Val's hand. Let's just jump back to that real quick. Here's a decent size of it. Um, you can see his hands, but the way that they're turned, you certainly would not be able to notice if, if there was a sixth finger on each hand. However, in Dr. Strangest's version of Val, we have enough pictures that, yeah, you can certainly see his hand, and that is a regular human hand, five fingers. 
Uh, also, when Doctor Strange speaks about meeting Val, he never mentions there being six fingers. So, if nothing else, one thing I did learn today, <laughs> one of these guys is telling a story. <laughs> Both of them might be telling a story, but certainly one of them is making up facts because the other one is not supporting that information. If I learned nothing else, I at least learned that. Uh, is it Phil making up the story? It's kind of strange. I have a feeling that it's possible that Phil read Dr. Strangest's book about Val and then somehow adopted some of those events onto himself and then grabbed this picture of his father being somewhere and kind of made up this thing that, hey, there's Val sitting right in front of my dad. Um, I think that might explain why we have two different physical Vals and we have different physical characteristics being described between the two as well. Now on top of that, and this might point a little bit towards Val being created by Dr. Stranges, we know that uh, he is a minister, we know that he likes to do uh, evangelizing, I hope that's the right word. Uh, here we get a note about Jesus Christ, and essentially uh, Val says that the Bible exists in all life-supporting planets, be it on book form or as a thought pattern. Now it's been a while, um, just for fair disclosure, I did go to Sunday school, I did uh, have my time studying the Bible. Um, I don't know, when you consider what Dr. Stranges says about Venus, uh, which he insists that Val lived under the uh, crust of Venus, that basically no one lives on the outer side of Venus, everyone lives under the crust of it. Um, the stories in the Bible, uh, I think they're, they're pretty locked to Earth. Um, maybe they have been regionalized. I mean, I know that's something that uh, you know modern storytellers do pretty regularly. They regionalize their stories from one place to the other. Just once again, I get this very strange feeling that that is a very convenient description. Oh, no one lives on the surface of Venus. Everyone lives under the surface. So that's why we haven't been able to see them with any type of technology or telescopes or anything along those lines. Um, I don't know. Just the, the conveniences that stack up on this story really kind of weigh on me. The thing that sucks, guys, is I want to believe someone out there. That's why I keep doing these episodes. That's why I look into, admitted, admittedly, this is a bit of a classic story. This story kind of even predates um, what we know as modern UFO abduction theories. This is not an abduction. This is a friendship being struck up by uh, Dr. Stranges and this guy, this alien, Val. Um, so it's, it's really tough. It kind of... I'll tell you guys, it, it just it doesn't feel great to me when I look into this stuff and the stories just don't add up. The information is all over the place. I can tell you, even of the basic story that I kind of gave you guys, I've seen so many different variations on that. That is just kind of the most simple and clean one. And that came from basically a, a skeptics website that's trying to review this case. And they had at least something that was cohesive that at least all these different variations of the story had a little thread of, oh, this same thing seems to happen in all of them. It is mind-boggling. I'm telling you guys, if you want a rabbit hole that has no bottom, this is the topic. At ancientufo.org, they have a very appropriate title, The Unbelievable Story of Valiant Thor. According to Dr. Stranges, Thor was about six feet tall and 185 pounds with brown wavy hair and brown eyes. Valiant Thor remained in the United States for three years. According to the book, he had been sent to Earth by the High Council to intervene on behalf of the intergalactic community. They were worried with our nuclear capabilities and how nuclear warfare could lead to the obliteration of the human race. What's interesting here is this article goes on to say that Dr. Stranges actually had top security clearance with the Pentagon. Uh, according to a story I heard directly from Dr. Stranges, that is not true. His clearance came from opening his jacket and faking that he had a badge. So once again, <laughs> I'm telling you guys, every source I look at is different on this. It's so weird. One of the things I noticed 
about uh, Doctor Strange's presentation was he was building up this story about when he eventually got to go on the spaceship Victor One. And after leading the audience through this buildup about him being able to do that, what does he talk about experiencing when he gets on the Victor One? Potty problems. Yeah. Apparently the first room he goes into on the Victor One is a bathroom. He uses the bathroom and then notices there's no toilet paper. Now luckily, um, one of the people, I don't know if it was... Uh, I don't think it was Dawn. I think it was one of the two lady names. Uh, one, of the, one of them apparently sent him a psychic message to look at the buttons to his right. There are three buttons. And then he presses the first button and it hits his bottom with such an intense burst of air that it almost knocks him through the ceiling. And then he hits the second and the third button. Basically, he's talking about a space bidet. And that is, I mean... Of the stories you're going to tell of the first time getting on a spaceship, really? The space bidet? (laughs) My mind was just kind of blown. Quite honestly, his lecture might be super, super entertaining if it wasn't so filled with just this kind of nonsensical fluff around getting to these stories. Um, I did find an example of another one of these stories. Uh, And once again, this is coming from an article that is trying to support this man, but these are the kind of stories that you're going to hear from him if you look into it. Dr. Frank told me once he was picked up at a hotel in Vegas and some government agents were following him and Vice Commander Teal when she said, watch this. They were driving in Victor One's water-powered car. Now let me just stop there for a second. They're driving around in technology from another civilization and no one's noticing, hey, there's a space car that runs on water that's driving around Las Vegas. Anyway, they were driving in Victor One's water-powered car and they turned into a cul-de-sac and she pushed an invisibility button as they went around a corner and they both did laugh and enjoy the agent's shocked face as he realized they had just disappeared. These are the types of stories. Um, Another story he told was about the type of clothes that Val... Val had this kind of suit, apparently, um, that he showed Dr. Strangis when he was at the Pentagon, and then he showed him another version of it when Dr. Strangis visited the Victor One. And it had a magical zipper. That's as good as I could describe it. He said that you would just wave your hand in front of where it was open and the fabric would seam together and you couldn't even tell that it was separated. It was like it would fuse together. And by the way, this magical outfit, um, I believe, was bulletproof. They tried to shoot a laser at it and it didn't heat up. Um, Just a wonderful, magical outfit. It just makes me wonder, before the internet, (laughs) before we all had access to a shared pool of information, which admittedly is not uh, 100% true, obviously, um, but it is, there is a consensus that you can kind of get from that pool of information if you look at enough different sources. Um, before that occurred, it seems to me like it was really easy to be this type of storyteller, to just take a picture of someone How would they know? These guys that are showing up in these pictures as Val, um, by this age, they're probably most certainly deceased. Uh, Is there family members of theirs out there that we should expect would have seen some of these pictures and come forward and said, hey, hey, that's no alien, that's my uncle. He, yeah, he worked at the Pentagon, or yeah, this person was at that base. Um, I don't know if we could really expect that. I think the way these pictures have circulated, with there being so few of them, with it, them being primarily shown at meetings, um, which, yeah, admittedly now you can go on YouTube and you can see some of these meetings, but back at the time, you saw these pictures for a few seconds in person, and then that was it. You really didn't have any way to further scrutinize or analyze those pictures. Um, you know, if back at the time, if someone really wanted to try to dig in there, it would have been great if they would have taken one of those photos, gone to these locations where these people were seen, you know, asked people at the Pentagon, hey, do you recognize this guy that's in this photo? He keeps popping up in these photos. Do you know who this is? But unfortunately, trying to do that 50 years after the fact, obviously that's not going to pan out. Um, It's just, it really boggles my mind, but I do think that 
at that time, you could do this and make a career out of it. And Doctor Strangest did seem to do that. Now, if all this wasn't already fantastic enough, Val also wrote a book. Now, the strange thing about it, it's called Outwitting Tomorrow. And you can find several areas where it was uh, noted as being written by Valiant Thor. Um, this information about it being published in 1939 is obviously not true. Even if you believe the story, Valiant Thor was not here until 1957, lived at the Pentagon until about 1960, and I guess he's been at Lake Mead uh, ever since. Here, there is a, a section at Goodreads about it, and they say it's a book by Frank E. Stranges. Um, I haven't read it, obviously, myself. I did read a couple of reviews about it. It seems like it is a bit of a self-help book. Here at NICUFO.org, we get a little bit of a, once again, different story than I've heard before <laughs> about where this book came from. Uh, here, it says, this book has been carefully written in simple terms by Dr. Frank E. Stranges with the advice of a starship commander, Valiant Thor, an immortal angel living among us today. This book contains definitive instructions regarding specific subjects directly related to universal law, resulting in immediate positive results for the protection, health, prosperity, and well-being of those willing to apply them. But then down here, what does it say? Outwitting Tomorrow by Commander Valiant Thor. Published in 1993, only 64 pages, but that'll cost you 11 bucks plus shipping and handling. Um, I don't know, guys. Uh, another moment that kind of struck me odd in the presentation I watched from Doctor Strange's is he talked about there being a screenplay which has been written for it. Uh, you'll find a link down below to the guy that wrote the screenplay. He has a video that he's also posted about this subject. And Doctor Strange's gets really excited about, hey, we're going to go into production next year. And guess who the lead's going to be? John Travolta. I don't know, guys. It just feels really, really flimsy to me, really, really hokey. And after spending all this time trying to get a core narrative of even what the story is, I'm not even just looking for, for something that I consider true. I want to know. You, you can't. You have to know what the main story is before you can even test it against physical aspects of truth and then hopefully try to line those up. It's a complete loss. This is a complete and total loss. Is this a out and out hoax? That's kind of what I'm feeling personally. And once again, I'm just telling you guys, it's just so disappointing. I want one of these semi-famous previous encounters to pan out. And yeah, I understand with this so much time that's passed, it's going to be hard to find that physical evidence. But for elements of truth, things do come along. You do hear... Uh, maybe from family members that kept a piece of something or kept clothing of someone's or have further pictures. Nothing else has really developed outside of this. It is essentially what did develop outside of Dr. Strange's story is Phil Schneider's story, which is vastly different. So even looking at that, even if you consider Phil an expert in this case, go back to the source material, the guy that wrote the book on Valiant Thor, and it doesn't match up. It really kind of discredits Phil in some way. Um, I don't know. Super, super frustrating. I'm sorry. I'm sure you guys can feel it from me. I'm a bit disappointed because I wanted to be able to find some compelling information that I could relay to you guys. Hey, they say that he's around. They say he's still at Lake Mead. Um, there is a strange anomaly that has been noted out there. People have been talking about it for years. These pictures surfaced. This guy hasn't aged. According to the lore that they set out about this Valiant Thor guy, it should be extremely easy to prove. Just a modern picture of the same guy without him aging would do it. But unfortunately, we don't have that. And unfortunately, you have everyone retelling this story and just, I don't know if they're adding their own things or if they're just getting it wrong. Um, but there is so many variations on this story. The core truth of whatever the story is, is just about impossible to grasp unless you consider someone the expert over the other. So I guess if you believe in Dr. Strange's, read his book. There's the core story. But know 
If you look into his lectures, you're probably going to hear things that are discrepancies. Uh, even just in one meeting that he had, there were several things I noted where I was like, wait, didn't he just say that that spaceship was in orbit 100 miles? Now he's saying the spaceship is at Lake Mead. What? Um, it feels like a guy that really enjoyed talking to people and made up this kind of little universe about this alien and he even weaves in uh, a meeting with Robert Kennedy, where Robert Kennedy had to come to Dr. Strange's to ask him two questions, to ask the alien, even though this alien had previously been living at the Pentagon. It just, it's, it's mind blowing. And then there's details about the death of Robert Kennedy, where it's like, wait, I don't think those details really line up with the known facts. It's... It just sounds like an old guy just telling stories. I'm sorry. I wish there was more to it. I sincerely do. But it, it just feels like an old guy telling stories. If anything outside of all that, what is interesting is I've noticed there can sometimes be two very opposing views about the Bible versus aliens being able to exist because of creation theory. And I don't want to really go into that topic a whole lot. I know it's a hotbed, but it is interesting to me that Dr. Frank Stranges seems to have melted those two uh, theologies together in a way where maybe they could, um, they could exist in each other's parameters. So if nothing else, maybe he's a good sci-fi writer. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, just let me, let me give you a warning. If you're going to try to look into this, it's going to hurt your brain. <laughs> it might frustrate you. <laughs> you might spend a lot of time watching Dr. Frank Strange's telling stories that you have your head just shaking like a bobblehead, like it's about to pop off. <laughs> but admittedly, there is something strangely entertaining to it. Um, the whole, day, you know, it wasn't a, a total loss for me <laughs> in terms of looking into this. Uh, I just don't know that I found what I was looking for, and that bums me out. I'm really hoping at some point one of these stories uh, gives me something to nudge my meter back in that believe column. It's weird. Since I started doing Brain Scratch, guys, I swear it's, it feels like, in particular, with the paranormal uh, alien topics, like, like some force is trying to turn me into this skeptic, and I don't want to do that. I want to believe that there are bigger things than we understand out there. As a matter of fact, the truth is I do believe it. That's what bums me out so much is when I want run into this evidence where people say that they agree with that belief and then when you really look at their information, it sucks and it doesn't support your belief and it starts pushing that needle back in the other direction. I don't want to become some hardened skeptic on this stuff, but quite honestly, stories like this that are a complete and total mess do not help it. So that is the end of my most frustrating brain scratch ever. <laughs> and I thank you guys for sticking along uh, the ride for that one. I, I just, I wish there was some other outcome, but this is how it wound up and here I am. So tell me about it in the comments below. Maybe you have some better idea about the story, about parts of the story that can be supported by some type of evidence out there. Um, maybe even some other people's accounts of what's going on. Uh, unfortunately, I think only Dr. Stranges and Phil, I think those are the only two people that I've seen that had actual contact with Val directly. Um, so maybe you know of other people that were supposedly witnesses to this or might have had independent contact with Valiant Thor um, if you do, please drop those links to that information in the, in the uh, comments down below. <sighs> I hope you guys have a great weekend. At least I'm smiling, if nothing else, right? That's got to be a good topic if it makes you smile. Um, take care, everyone. I'll see you on the next show back here on the Lord and Arts channel on Monday. Have a great weekend.